for carry on opposite teams, but for the most part, they focus on themselves. How many touches will they get, and can they create big plays for their own team? And both of these guys, certainly more than five, ten touchbacks. They're workhorses. Set to go now is Connor Barth, and we are underway from downtown Minneapolis. This is taken at his four. Then a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. And they'll be led out by their quarterback, the former Louisville Cardinal, Teddy Bridgewater. To me, the best part of Teddy Bridgewater's game is his decision-making. Very smart, loves to watch the game, loves to analyze it, and he does it so well, he takes care of the football and keeps his team in good spots. First carry for Latavius Murray. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And the offensive starters for the Vikings. When I see Latavius Murray with the ball in his hands, I think that he's a dangerous player. He has good speed, good presence to run inside, nice toughness, and good vision that once he gets past the first line of defense, he can make a guy miss and turn it into a bigger game. Offense looking to avoid a third and long. It's second and ten. Again, it's Murray. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. It's a loss of two. Now third down. The evaluation process in today's NFL does not take into account as much bulk as it does speed, and that's what we're seeing with the linebacker position. Those guys that can run, they can play at any spot because they can make plays on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. Three and out, a real danger here on their opening drive as they come up on a third and 12. Let's go. Here's Bridgewater. Screenplay, McKinnon. And he maybe makes it back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Good contain. No gain on the screen. And it'll bring up fourth down. So unable to get any yardage at all off of the screen there on third down. And ordinarily on third down, that's when you want to bring pressure. You get all your guys who want to get after the quarterback. But how about the patience they showed? Read the play, snuffed it out, and made a nice stop. So on fourth down, here's Ryan Quigley now to kick this one away. Oh, the spin. 12 yards on the return that time. And the Bears take over. Chicago Bears offense here they come onto the field and there's Mitchell Trubisky who you figure is their quarterback of the future last year though dead last in the league just 175 passing yards a game and they know that that's not going to cut it so they had to make a change in the head coaching position they've done that he's going to bring in a new regime that fits the talents of Mitchell Trubisky a lot of the things he did in college his ability to use his legs as well they're going to meet him halfway and then expand his knowledge about the NFL as they move along. Here's carry number one for Jordan Howard. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. And the Buffet Boys, the O-line, hopefully they're ready today. Listen, you got to feed them first. But if you do, you usually get a great product out on the field. And when they play well, the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards. Second down following the run. Let's go! They go with Howard again. And some room to maneuver. 
A big hitter there. A first down gain of 26 yards. Sometimes those lines that are drawn on a grease board or in a playbook, they come to life <laughs> out on the field, don't they? And we just saw that on that outside handoff to the right. That right tackle, he gets excited for that call, doesn't he? He does, because he just wants to dominate his guy and say, listen, I was the point of attack. I took care of business. That's why you're able to get downfield and add all those yards to your total. Yeah, really nice game there. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. First down, they run with Howard. And the lane closes up quickly as he'll get about three down to the 38. And a look at the Vikings defensive unit. Coming out of UCLA, Anthony Barr caused many arguments in the NFL. Not about his talent. That was first round all day. But how would he be used? Defensive end, outside linebacker. With Minnesota, they use him in both spots. And he's been a pro bowler in two of his first three seasons. Trubisky, and he fires one that's intercepted. Picked up by Andrew Sandejo, and they are going to set up shop at the 32-yard line. And that's a great example of ball skills right there, partner. You and I do a lot of games, and I can't tell you how many guys look to run with the football before they've intercepted it. So that's a nice job of focusing on the task at hand and coming away with the interception. So the football switching hands here in just a second. And, you know, Tom Brady, just to go off on a tangent for a second, may have lost the Super Bowl. But third MVP this past season and what he did at age 40, really something, right, Charles? Absolutely phenomenal. Ended up beating out Todd Gurley, the running back for the Los Angeles Rams. But he would have traded it for a Super Bowl win, don't you think? How about this? The last nine NFL MVPs to play in the Super Bowl that same season, 0-9. Oh, yeah. We go all the way back to Kurt Warner in, what, 1999, 99. where he won the double? We were going over that stat earlier. That is hard to believe. But he would have been the MVP had the Patriots pulled that one out. Yeah, he still has five rings, though, five Super Bowl titles for Brady. And some room to work. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. That one goes for 24 yards. comes to the line now first and ten alert, alert. Free out, free out. Head, head. now Bridgewater and seeing no options he just tosses this one away incomplete now that'll bring up second down and here are the Chicago defensive starters. Prince of Mukamara was signed as a free agent from Jacksonville because of what Chicago has to deal with in their own division. When you think of the NFC North, you think of Green Bay and Detroit and their ability to throw the ball all over the field with big, fast, shifty receivers, and you can never have enough guys to try and cover them. Offense still needing 10 yards, second down. the shotgun it's Bridgewater and he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds it's a 10-yard pickup and it moves the chains that's a matchup maybe they go back to their outer third of the field as this game continues yeah I think back to my high school coach John Ford he used to say when we got big plays early in a game or good plays he'd always say follow it away lad follow it away because he'd want to come back to it later in a key situation they may come back to this one a little more often than that. Didn't he say laddie, or did he say lad? Yeah, it just depend on what he was feeling at the okay. moment. Okay, I thought, I thought that was the guy you told me about that used to say laddie a lot. Laddie? When you heard laddie, he's usually in a pretty good mood. Lad? Eh. On first down, Murray. 
And not much running room. Down to the 32. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. They go with Murray again. And he struggles to get a yard here, maybe a yard, down to the 31. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action and hit them over the top. And they got to get to the 23 here on third. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Neutral zone infraction defense. So they got him coming up from his linebacker spot. And sometimes the position designation really doesn't matter. If you creep up to the line of scrimmage, you just have to look for the football. Make sure it moves before you do. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. From the gun, Bridgewater. And that is incomplete. You absolutely have to have this early on, right? Third and short, they elect to throw for it. And that's normal NFL football. They're going to throw on third and short, but you've got to hit it, don't you? Yeah, in the first quarter, like you said, to set the tone, can't connect there. On now is Kai Forbath to try the field goal. This a 43-yard attempt. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. Now it's scoop. And look out. I think he's going to go. The 40, 20, 10. And he will score. Touchdown, Chicago. Here's Connor Barth for the point after. And he's got it to make it 7-0 in favor of the Bears. After the touchdown, Barth now to kick it away. This one fielded at the five. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. Opportunity to change momentum 
big play right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. Two seconds to go, first quarter. Throwing again, Bridgewater on second and ten. And he is going to go down. He will be sacked on the final play of this first quarter. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we've hit the end of quarter one. Seven nothing is our score. We're back to Minneapolis in just a moment. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Back now with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter begins with the Vikings holding the football. They do, however, have a tough third and long coming up. And the offense now will try to regroup after the sack on second down. Third down, Bridgewater. It'll be a three-yard gain, and that's going to make it fourth down. Here's Ryan Quigley now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Chicago's offense getting set to take over, and it's a crew, not only offensively, but defensively, obviously, collectively. The four straight last place finishes, that's what they're facing as they enter 2018. Now, if there's a silver lining, I guess, they did go from three wins to five wins last year. But you're really but exciting they, the fans on that one, aren't I you? Was, I was reaching. reaching. <laughs> Look, they finished number 10 on defense in the league, which was really somewhat remarkable because they had a number of injuries on all three levels, and somehow they fashioned that together. But Mitchell Trubisky, their rookie quarterback, who played well in spurts, they've got to surround him with talent, and a number one receiver would be a great place to begin because right now the guys playing the perimeter they're not going to give you very many game-breaking plays. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. Trubisky with the give to Howard. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards. Back to the 33. It's a loss of a yard there. And now second down. Came out in a power set, but that only served to put more men in the box. And guess what? If you're going to do that, you've got to win up front, right? Your offensive guys have got to beat the defenders. They lost all leverage on that play. This is Howard on second down. Now Howard stripped. He lost the football. And the Vikings pick up the football. And he will take this one into the end zone for a Viking touchdown. Even the great ones, some of the best, they're not immune to the fumble. And here it really hurts them. If the ball gets away from any runner's body, that's when the defense pokes at it, swipes at it, swats at it, and finds a way to create a big play for themselves.
Kai Forbath on for the extra point. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. Now the return man. This is Benny Cunningham. And he'll be brought down at the 23. Make it the 24-yard line. CD, I want to get your thoughts on some potential free agents this offseason before we change the possession here. Now, caution, many of these guys could be resigned, I know, but who are some of them? Kirk Cousins is one. Yeah, we're talking about difference makers. Kirk Cousins at the quarterback position. He's going to be coveted around the league for by quarterback needy teams. Case Keenum had a big year. Could he move? But how about running backs? Le'Veon Bell, Deion Lewis, some pass catchers, Jimmy Graham, Jarvis Landry, Sammy Watkins. And about the guy who goes and gets quarterbacks, DeMarcus Lawrence had a monster year for Dallas last season. Yeah, a lot of big names that could be out there as free agents. They'll begin the drive with Howard. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. Another nice run there by Jordan Howard. And, and when we talk about fresh legs, how about 2016? Jordan Howard, the number two rookie rusher. Heck, the number two rusher in the NFL <laughs> behind another rookie, Ezekiel Elliott. In the first three weeks of the season, he only had 12 carries. So once week four hit, really found his groove. <laughs> and now whistles and a flag. And I think we got to jump here. Neutral zone infraction, defense. And he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff because the ball was snapped. But I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. as they get to him just beyond the 45 after the broken tackle. Call it a gain of a couple there as it'll leave him with a second and just three. Doesn't matter who you're rooting for in this game, the effort of the man with the football getting away from one and trying to turn forward and get some yardage, I really liked what he did there. Set, green, 39. On second down, here's Trubisky. His throw is going to be incomplete. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown him a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after him. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept him on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Trubisky now to throw on third down. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. So on fourth down, on is the punter Pat O'Donnell to kick it away. Marcus Sherrill's back deep for Minnesota. Yeah. 
And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. But before the possession switches here, I had written down that I wanted to talk about some of the awards this past season in the NFL. We know Brady was the MVP, but Todd Gurley, Offensive Player of the Year. How about that for a bounce back? Many were questioning whether he'd had a sophomore slump the season before. Didn't even get to 1,000 yards. Was a dominant force in 2017. How about his teammate Aaron Donald on yeah. the defensive side? He took home Defensive Player of the Year award. Yeah, very impressive. They had both sides of the ball. Sean McVay deserving, I think you would agree, of Coach of the Year. Yeah, definitely. I mean, what he did for the Rams when they went from last in the league in scoring to leading the league in scoring and winning a division title. And how about the New Orleans Saints? Rookie of the year, offense and defense. Alvin Kamara on offense, Marshawn Lattimore on defense. And he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be getting rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. A second down throw for Bridgewater. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. The Vikings on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and 10. Out of the gun, Bridgewater. Complete to right. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. Here's Ryan Quigley now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. Two minutes to play in a tightly contested first half. More from Minneapolis after this. We're just two minutes away from sending you to Orlando for Larry Ridley in our EA Sports Halftime Report, so don't forget about that coming up shortly. Yeah, it wouldn't be a halftime without him, and we thank him for doing the highlights. Let's go get a snack. Here's Ryan Quigley now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. That'll be a 48-yard punt, one yard on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Before the offense changes hands here, let's look back at the Super Bowl February 5th. What a game. I know you were there calling it offensively, though. Impressive on both sides. It certainly was, and let's face it, if you're in Minnesota, it's cold outside, but you talk about the offenses, they heated up in a big way. And how about Nick Foles? The backup quarterback turned MVP. 373 yards, three touchdowns, and of course, the big one receiving on the Philly special. Quite a story. As you and I were talking about off-air, it was just a fluid game. Not a lot of penalties, just really clean play. Exactly. Exactly the type of game the NFL needed for the audiences at home watching the game and, of course, people in attendance. A really well-played game. Quick throw. That's complete on the inside slam. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out. And by a few inches, that'll be a first down. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Let's go! 319! 319! On first and ten, it's Trubisky. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll bring up a second and 11. 
Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yardage. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. movement. I think this is against the Bears here. Let's find out. Foster offense. That's going to set him back five yards. Trubisky, and his throw is going to be incomplete. A little too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. They really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong, didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. Here's the first carry for Tariq Cohen. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. And now the Vikings are going to stop it here on defense with a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. Here's Pat O'Donnell now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And a nice job here on special teams. This will be down inside the 10 at the 8-yard line. Vikings coming out here again to take over on offense. And this is a crew, obviously, that was so close, Charles, to becoming the first ever team to play a Super Bowl in their own stadium. So disappointment in that last game against Philly. But overall, I think they've got to be pretty pleased with the season. They have to be because they put it all together. Won the NFC North. How about that win over the Saints in the divisional round? I mean, I don't know that they'll ever top that in terms of getting something done late in the game, especially with what was on the line. They do get Dalvin Cook back at running back next year. I think they'd still like to have a little more speed at wide receiver. But all in all, this team comes back pretty well intact and will be a force for a while. Yeah, that defense is pretty sad. Very much so. <laughs> I mean, I try and move the ball against their front and then try and throw it against Xavier Rhodes. Good luck to you. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. So a touchdown apiece. That's what we have to show at halftime as they head to the locker room. 7-7 seven, seven hour score. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead and we resume action here in corner number three. This is taken at the three. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. So here's the Bears offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. 
They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. Take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. It's real easy to say this running game needs to be better, but the reality is they've been given little time to actually find a place to run the football. It's almost like the defense is there on the handoff. He'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. One yard officially on the pickup, and it'll leave him with a third and 11. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. Here we go now. Three, nine, on third down, Trubisky. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete, certainly one they'd like to have back as it brings up fourth down. Well, pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? O'Donnell, he's on to punt as he gets this one away. <laughs> we'll call that a punt of 54 yards, well struck. And the Vikings will be backed up deep to begin their drive as they take over first and 10. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. Their defense did its job, yielded no points. Now it's the offense's turn. And how much fun is that when you set things up to start a half and you just tell you guys, hey, if you can shut them down, get it back for our offense, we can roll. And they played out perfectly. Now, can the offense do what they want them to do at the half, which is find those weaknesses and now attack them and score some points. And break this tie. Let's go. Ready. They begin the drive with a run by Murray. Rumbling past the 30, and he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. You and I both know that you don't really, truly replace Adrian Peterson, but Latavius Murray's a really good back. Similar running styles, too. Won't wear the same number, we know that. But when you see him run, you might see a little bit of that in him, upright with some power. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. To throw is Bridgewater. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. Give him three on the play, and that'll make this a second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. That was second down one for Murray. <laughs> Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave him with a third and about five. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Let's go. Hey. Way 90. Way 90. Hey. 
Bridgewater from the gun on third down. And he's got Kyle Rudolph. And he's got the first down yardage there as he takes it just across midfield. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. It used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. Now the Georgia Southern man. This is Jarek McKinnon, and he's brought down. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. For so many years, I was convinced it was a myth, you know, because you always hear about the smaller running back. Oh, he gets lost. You can't find him, and sometimes that's part of his genius. But it's true. You get behind big offensive linemen, the defensive line guys trying to find him, trying to peek around people to see him, and he gets lost. But this guy gets lost in a good way for his offense, picking up big yardage. Throw left side on target to Thielen. And he's going to be out of bounds down inside the 20. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs, hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. And here comes play number six on this drive. It's Murray, and he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. And on second and ten now. Now a give. This is Murray. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. It'll be a pickup of five, and that leaves him with five more. Third and five now. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. The Vikings on third down. Just one for five to this point. This will be third and five. to throw Bridgewater and this is going to be incomplete but that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play instead of just going for the first down took the shot in the end zone went for the touchdown and on third down maybe said forget about the sticks we want six so out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today will put this one through and they take the lead here now at 10 to 7. So he missed a field goal earlier but he says not this time and he's able to knock it through to give his guys three. And that's all you want as a kicker. A chance to redeem yourself. You gotta have a short memory if you're gonna survive at this level and he's able to get back on track. Forbath now to kick it away after the main field goal. This one fielded at the five. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away. Yes, yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive.
Looking to throw, Trubisky on first down. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Sims. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. territory that burst good for 20 and a first down well partner i have to say they caught him in the right defense there nickel set fifth defensive back on the field and they love to run against that because now you typically get a bigger blocker on a smaller defender yeah because those dbs like you they want the interception they're not as worried about the running play right <laughs> not at all and I, I, used to, I, I still remember being in school and one of my offensive line teammates used to say, boy, I love to come downfield and hit you little people. <laughs> Good run there. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Out of the gun, Trubisky. And that's complete. It's Sims. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Now Trubisky to throw on second. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. down Trubisky and this time not quite to the 30 it'll be down at the 31 yard line call it a three yard game and that'll make it a second down I know most of the time when the ball's in the air you're thinking wide receiver tight end but running backs they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Uh, here we go. Three, 19. Ah! Now Trubisky to throw. The screen pass here to Cohen. Touchdown, Chicago! A great play there. 31 yards. And the Bears have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. There are several elements to a well-executed screen pass. This one resulted in a touchdown. It had all of those elements. Yeah, you're so right, because you really need the rush to almost get to the quarterback, almost get to the passer. 
then you've got to get the ball thrown perfectly, whether it's to the running back, the wide receiver, whoever the screen guy is. And, of course, the blocking has to form in front to get him downfield for the touchdown. And that makes it 14-10. So the drive there took six plays, and it culminates in a touchdown for Chicago. Barth now to kick this one away. This is taken at the three. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. First and ten, Bridgewater. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Second down, Bridgewater again. And Rudolph has it left side. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. It is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge 6'6 target that they've got in him. They really do, and it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He had told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. And of course, the quarterback in this situation, he's realizing time is becoming a factor. Let's see if they can get some points on the board here late. First down, Bridgewater. And complete, right side, the tight end Rudolph. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Give him nine there on the first down completion. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there were more people there to get him down. Tip carry of the game now, Murray. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Time for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. This is third and two. Maybe the biggest play in this football game. Bridgewater now going with a screen for Murray. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. 
It'll be a loss of one, and that'll bring up fourth down. He'll look to throw. And some room to roam now. He's got a first down and more inside the 30. 18 yards on the pick up there. And that leads to a Minnesota first down. start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here? Or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. Closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. Give him three on the game there. Second and goal. They'll look to throw. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking for his tight end there, Kyle Rudolph. Third down here. Now we're in the situation where the quarterback's got to take full charge of his huddle. Got to totally command and make sure all eyes are on him. All focus is locked in. Going to call multiple plays and go over different situations and scenarios to make sure everyone is on the same page. This offense on third down today, it's been a problem. Just one for seven thus far. They're looking at a third and goal here. Back to throw. He's got his man. It's taken in for a freaking touchdown. Laquan Treadwell from four yards out. And the Vikings have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. Wow, I know it's a never-say-never never situation, but to me, that looks like that's the one that's going to finish them off. The score that puts them in front here late, but now you've got to rally your kick team, don't you, and say the last thing we need is a big return. And what happens is guys get overeager, get out of their lane because they're so excited they want to make the last tackle. <laughs> you mess up, could come back at you a long way. So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota.
Horvath out to kick this one away. This is taken at the three. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. They're only in need of a field goal, a decent amount of time on the clock. So tell me if I'm wrong. You don't have to be too panicked here. No, not at all. I agree with you. And this is where your preparation and your confidence comes into play. They've worked on these situations. Yeah, they practice this all oh, the time. They practice it all the time. They know what they want to get done. And in a lot of cases, the great competitors, they love this situation. They think they can go ahead and get it done. They practiced it. We'll see if practice makes perfect. He's back to throw. And he's taken to the ground, but he was pulled down by the face mask. Here come the flags. And I believe this is going to be a first down. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all. And now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. He gets it to Sims, complete. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. The completion good for three, and it's second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Throwing now is Trubisky. The catch is made by Kendall Wright. And prior to this third and two play, we're going to get a timeout call. As it comes with exactly a minute to go in the football game. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. The Bears on third down, 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. Here it's third and two. Here we go now. Three, 19. Three, 19. Trubisky to throw. Oh, he's got some breathing. Now Trubisky lost the football, and this belongs to the Vikings. Well, that simply is a missed opportunity. They're in position. If they take the ball downfield and score, They've got a chance to win the game. Instead, they cough it up. I don't think next week at practice is going to be a whole lot of fun for him. On the other side, no bigger time to force a turnover when you've got that small lead. Yeah, and when you look at it from the, the offense's perspective, taking care of the ball is so important. I know they're going to have all kind of ball security drills in practice all next week. start the drive and he's going to get this one down to the 45 and now the Bears are going to signal for another timeout that'll be their second so one more chance to stop the clock here then we'll be back so the defense had a chance to catch their breath and now they're back out and ready
See if they stay on the ground for second down. This is Murray. And he's going to be met at about the 43. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. The Vikings on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This time they face a third and two. Victory formation time for the Vikings as they'll take a knee here. Here's Ryan Quigley now. He's been terrific so far. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end. But they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still... You're wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot.